This audio was recorded for the Heads and Tails Mental Health Project with Chili Studios. <coughs> okay, uh, my name's Paul and what I want to talk about is living with and managing bipolar disorder. Just to give you an idea of how important this is, the latest screening survey on uh, for bipolar disorder found that 2% of the UK population were suffering with bipolar disorder. It's a huge amount, that's over a million people, and we're mostly undiagnosed. Uh, in my case, uh, I was a very disturbed child. Um, I was relentlessly bullied at school. I had no emotional support from my mum. Um, this trauma brought on bipolar. I reckon I've been bipolar since the age of eight. I had no clue I was a sufferer until about 15 years ago when I got diagnosed. Um, at that point, at that point, a whole lot of things in my life made a lot of sense. The really long periods of depression, the wild, extreme and dangerous behaviours I got involved in at times. It was really helpful to get a diagnosis and since that point, it's been a learning experience and I've spent the last 15 years learning how to cope with bipolar and how it affects me. My bipolar is coupled with overwhelming anxiety. Consequence of that is when I got to college, I started self-medicating in a big way. I was a regular and heavy user of cannabis. Um, and as I discovered a lot later, that's an emotional stunting drug which meant I avoided dealing with anxiety, um, which just made it worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, I also, after the cannabis, I got into class A drugs for decades. Ecstasy, acid, magic, magic mushrooms, MDMA, and it was a thoroughly good time, but I do wonder whether it was a good idea in the first place. Uh, yeah, I've got a good personal understanding now of how bipolar affects me, but what I would say is the, what, the, the nature of bipolar disorder that once in a while it'll slink up on you and it'll bite you in the bum. Yeah, unexpected things happen. I was a real martyr to my mood swings until I started here. Um, Rico started at Rikoko. Rikoko is my local recovery college. Um, and it's much more than a college, it's a community. I truly belong here, I feel like I'm part of the furniture, and we all support each other, and it makes such a difference. The uh, big thing about college is, once I started here, I started to develop some wellness tools, things to help me manage bipolar, because before, I was just a master to the mood swings, once the depression started, that was it, right? I know I'm going to go acute, nothing I can do about it. Um, and when the mania kicked in, well, to be honest, I like a bit of mania, but I do know how to manage it um, when, it gets, when it gets too much. Uh, the sort of wellness tools that actually happen to work for me in particular are mindfulness, coming here, and the gym. But we all have different, there's different tools that work for different people. Um, what I would say is that I have received support at various times from professional mental health services and medication is, is sort of fundamental, but it's not the be all and end all. It's what you can do to cope with it that, that really counts. Um, and the last thing I'd like to say is bipolar disorder is debilitating, but the really important thing is how you manage it how you cope with it. Uh, I'd just to further like to reinforce the point that professional mental health services and, and medication are important, but they're not the be all and end all. Thank you.